Good evening, Outdoor Office family. Special Lovely guest. wifey. Special guest here tonight. She is going to show us how to make some homemade goodness of cinnamon bread. Some As you can see badness. back there in the back. Some homemade badness. What? Wait, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't like it. But what we got is you got your sugar, your salt, your yeast, eggs, uh, shortening, and then measuring, and a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and is that how you do it? <laughs> All right. So, first off, we got to heat the milk up, get the milk in there, get the yeast in there. What else goes in there first? The yeast and the sugar and the Crisco go in first. Yeast, Crisco, and sugar go in first, and we'll get that bubbling, we'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. Ingredients in first, we have yeast, three packages of Fleshman's, Fleshman's Active Dry Yeast. Original. We have a half a cup of sugar. Then Here we, is a half a bar of shortening that Caleb is cutting up into thirds. Half a cup. Oh, a half a cup. And then we cut All it right. into thirds this way. Cut it into thirds. We'll put that in there. Smaller pieces. Now what are you what? doing here with your milk? Smaller pieces. That's smaller pieces. Okay, smaller That's pieces. Smaller pieces. All right. So what? About a about a quarter inch thick, maybe. Just chop it fine so that it kind of has time to melt. And... Okay. Chop that up in halves there, bud. You don't have to put it straight. So what do you do here with your milk? Why were you warming it? The recipe calls for two cups of very warm milk. Okay. Why is that? That activates the yeast. You have okay. to be very careful. The milk has to be warm enough, but not too warm. If the milk is too hot and scalding, it will kill your yeast and you, your bread will not rise. Ugh. It not can't good. be too cold either because then it won't activate it. So I generally put it in the microwave. And I'm a very, you know, I stick my fingers in things, I taste it, I, I'm a baker by feel. So I, I like to be able to stick my finger in it and hold it in there, it's still not warm enough. Uh oh. So I want it All to right. be so that I put it in there and it's like almost too hot to... Um, Alright. My mom told me yesterday that red is science. Alright. Red is science? Red is science. Red is science. Alright. Not red. Well, let's see what happens here in just a moment. All right, this is with the milk, the shortening, the yeast, sugar, salt. Is salt in there? No. Not yet. All right, puts a towel over it. Let it, rise, let it sit for five to ten minutes. Five to ten minutes, and we'll check it out and see what's happening. All right, what are we doing now? The recipe calls for two eggs beaten room temperature. Okay. So I generally like to take my eggs, crack them into the container that I warm my milk in, and beat them that way. That way it helps kind of bring the eggs... Without making them have to sit out for a while. Alright. Are you getting ready to put the eggs in there? I will eventually. Alright, but not look, right look now. Look at the look at the rise. Is it, Is what's, it rising? What's, what are we doing? What are we doing? It's oh, working. It's starting to work. Sweet. Alright. Let it keep working. What are we looking at? So what happens when you let it sit? Nice. Does that mean it's doing what it's supposed to? Yep. If you do not see that, your yeast is no good or you killed it. Cool. So now we'll just hook it up. Hook it up. Turn it on low. Add your two beaten eggs. And two teaspoons of salt. Two teaspoons or tablespoons? Teaspoons. Teaspoons. All right. And we're good there, right? Yep. So what kind of flour or bread flour are you using? You can use regular flour. You can use all bread flour. It depends on how you like your bread. Right. Um, how do you like to make 
your I famous use half bread. And half all right. Because I feel like it makes it a little bit firm, but makes it still soft at the same time. Okay. The recipe calls for seven cups of flour. All right. And? I usually add about five, and then slowly start adding. I can't say in the time I've ever made bread that I've had to use all seven cups. Okay. It's so those are finicky. those are those are half cup those measures. Those are actually third of a cup. All right. And it's very finicky. Based on the humidity and temperature outside. Humidity, temperature, whatever. I don't know the moon phases. I'm not really quite sure. All right. Um, moon phases and bread making. I <laughs> have been making this long enough that I pretty much just know. How it looks, how it should feel. All right. If you add too much flour, you can't ever get it back. So start out with five and then go from there, right? Yeah. And again, it's not super exact. I'm not being exact. Bread making is not exact. All right. What are we looking like in here? Getting all kneaded up. That's a bread hook on there, right? Yep. I know a little bit about bacon. So, all right. What's the next steps after this? Kneading it with your hands and letting it rise. Kneading it with your hands and letting it rise. All right. We'll check out what's going on here in just a moment then. So what do we got now? Is this all the flour, or are you add more? Or? I don't know. I just added some more. Okay. I'm not sure if it's all the flour or not. You will know when it's enough when the bread consistently starts being pulled away from the sides. See how it's starting to pull away from the sides of the pan? Yep. That's getting close. All right. You have to let it mix for quite a while, though, because it, once things mix up, it may start to mush back out a little bit. All That's right. not a technical term, either. Mush? No. Mush back out? Are you sure? Something like that. See it's starting to go back down again. Oh, yep. Alright. <laughs> Alright, what's the next step? Once you have enough flour, dough will still be slightly sticky, right. but kind of easily come off stuff. Okay. That's his number. Yes, it is. There's our going to be homemade cinnamon bread. So how much will this make again? One recipe One will make will what? Make four loaves. Four loaves of this. So yep. we're talking what? Uh, four inches by, I don't know, nine inches maybe? Four inch by nine inch by two inch, two and a half inch deep pan. So, and it'll make four of those you say? Yes. If you're making big loaves, it'll make two big loaves. The last portion is to flour your hands okay. and to knead it. Okay. You want it to, again, be slightly tacky but not stick to your hands that much. You should okay. be able to touch it and it not stick to your hands. All right. Then what do we do there? And then once it's done, you pat it down in the pan and you stick it in the oven to proof. If you have right. a proofer on your oven, even better. I already have another. All right, all right. There that's proofing. So how do we know when it's going to be It'll proofed? Double in size. Double in size. Usually it comes to the top of the container oh. that it's in. All right. We'll check back when it's done. Bread is proofed. So what do we do? What happens now? <laughs> oh. Punch down your bread. Now, how do you know how much to take out? I divided it in four equal sections. Okay. 
You do that by how? Feel. <laughs> you don't weigh it or anything? No. <laughs> Looks about even. And then you divide that in half. Again, I'm not a very precise baker. Sorry. Okay, now what do we do? Take one of your sections. as you want. If you want more swirls with more cinnamon, then you make it thinner. If you want less, you make it thicker. So, how thick is that? About, I don't know, quarter of an inch? Three inch of an inch? You what do you got there? A thin layer of butter on the top. Okay. To help the cinnamon sugar stick. Alright. I don't know if there's any other reason other than that. My mom taught me. All right. Now, do we have to pre-coat the pans or anything? I pre-coat them. I spray them down. Okay. You can use regular bread pans. Okay. However, I feel these are the most convenient and easiest to get out. All right. You so make how up much cinnamon, cinnamon sugar? sugar? I don't know. You just pour some on. So you can make an even thin layer over the top. All the way to the edge. So as close to the edge as you can get. Now, if somebody wanted nuts in their bread, can you do that? Put nuts in your bread, yes. Is this you where you would the add cinnamon, the nuts? Yes, you would add the nuts here. You cannot add the cinnamon sugar to your dough. Nuts. You've asked me for years, and I've told you for years. You cannot add the cinnamon sugar to your dough because the sugar will cause your dough to melt. Once you get a thin layer, you start rolling. I generally, as I'm rolling, like to kind of do a little gentle pull towards me, it makes the rolls tighter. you from getting a bunch of air bubbles. As you get almost close to the end, I like to take my ends and kind of gently roll them in so that the cinnamon sugar doesn't leak out the side. You don't have to do that. It's just how I make mine. And then you place it in your pan, bottom flap on the bottom. Like that. And you've got four more times to do that, right? Yep. And then what? them again, let them rise again. How long does a proof take? Again, it depends on what you're, what you're doing it in, how warm your oven is, everybody's oven's different. About an hour, could be a little more, a little less. I generally go with the, till your bread has doubled in size. Doubled in size again. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we won't watch the next three being made, but We'll see what happens when we go in the oven to get the other ones out. All right, the proofing's over. So what do you think's wrong here? Just, just didn't raise like the other stuff down. Oh, look at that, look at that. Bang. Now what do you bake it at? 375 for 25 to 35 minutes, depending upon the size of your loaves, your oven, all kinds of stuff. Now, will you bake four I, loaves at a time? Three, yeah, three to four loaves at a time. Okay. And I cover it with a brown paper bag. In the oven? Yes. All right, well, once it preheats, we'll see that process. All right, the trick here with the paper bag is what? Don't let it touch any of the edges. Huh? Don't let it touch the edges of it. Why is that? Because it'll catch on fire. No, it will not. Only at 451 degrees 
Once it gets to 452, paper will catch on fire, but not until then. So, what's the paper bag used for? To keep it from getting too brown on top. Nice. So, can we see some of this goodness? Yep. What are you doing here? I'm softening some butter because as soon as it comes out, I brush the top with butter because everything's better with butter. So, you just sell it in? Let's get a. Can I take the paper off? Look at that. Yum, yum. You can actually smell that through my camera. I know you can. Oh, there's one. Dose. Trace. And crotch roll, I mean quattro. <laughs> oh, the next four going in. Come on. Now, you butter all edges or just the top? Just the top. Just the top and a little bit on the sides. Paper's going back in. Last four loaves are going in. 35 minutes? 25 minutes and then you check on it. All right. So let's see what we got. Let's see what this stuff looks like here. With the butter going on. Yeah, buddy. Look at that, look at that. Jackpot. Now who, who gets to partake in some of this goodness that you're making? Close friends and family. Alright. Which ones are the close friends? Um. Preacher and Miss Holly. Yeah. Who else? Um, our friends the Beltzes. Our neighbor, Mr. Joe. The boys, of course. Yeah, Mama and Papa and Matthew will be up here. Mama and Matthew. Nana and Pop Pop. This is a tradition. Every Thanksgiving morning and Christmas morning, my boys have homemade cinnamon bread to eat. That is our tradition. You look tired, sweetie. Sorry, I'm blinded. Because it's really bright. And it's uh, 11 o'clock at night. No, it's well, midnight. 12. It's midnight. All right. Well, here we go. Homemade cinnamon bread brought I'll to you. I'll leave it cool just slightly. I usually leave it cool for about 15, 20 minutes before I take it out of the pans. Nice. Then you need to take it out of the pans. Don't leave them in the pans because they'll get soggy on the bottom. All right. There you go. So what do you do when you take it out of the pans? I store it in Ziplocs. It doesn't look the greatest if you have a there it is. if you have some kind of a specialty like fun boxes for the holidays or things like that. I'm not that creative. I'm not. All right. Well, there you go. Homemade cinnamon bread how-to. Let me know if you try this recipe out. How it comes out for you. But there it is. Good luck there. I know you want a bite of this. I mean, you can smell it through the camera. Mm. Hit that subscribe button. Y'all take it easy.